Working with the Lightshark MIDI templates is one of those questions that I've gotten a lot lately. And so I thought I'd make a video to show you how simple it is to modify the templates for your own use. The first thing we want to do is go to the Lightshark website at workpro.es slash Lightshark and go to the support page here at the top bar. Then download the MIDI templates file. We can then open it up and unzip it. And we'll also open up the user manual. Now in the user manual, it's going to describe to us the way to modify the MIDI templates. And I know that it is on page in the current manual, it is on page 99 under connectivity and MIDI. Here we see all of the functions that we're able to access from MIDI in the Lightshark and the commands that we need to enter for our MIDI controller. Now let's look at one of the pre-built templates for the Lightshark. Heading back to our file explorer, I'm going to open up the template for the Korg Nano Control 2. This is the one with the faders. Now I like to open this one and I'm going to open it with a program called Notepad++. You can open it with any simple text editor, um, but one that's designed for XML editing tends to work a little better. And what we can see here, if I close my other tabs, is that we have here each button on the Nano Control and then all of the faders. Now, thankfully, the Lightshark team does a really good job when they create these of keeping them organized. And so you're able to go in here, see all of the different buttons and what they do that are on your device. Now, for the nano control, one thing, one question that I see a lot is people say, OK, I've got an LS1. And so rather than having the faders and buttons be playbacks one through eight, because I already have those on my LS1, I would like those to be um, starting at 11 through 18. Changing that is really just as simple as changing this playback number. So we could go to make it 11, 12, oops, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You get the idea. Now for the buttons, it'll take a second longer. Here, we'll just have to, again, go and make each one 11, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13, and on and on and on. Now, if you want to change what the buttons do, that is under the action setting, both for buttons as well as for the faders. We need to now look at the manual to see the function that we want. You can see there's a lot of them. So if we wanted to control, for example, our executor buttons on the buttons of the Korg Nano control, we could just go ahead and copy this command, open up our template, and then find the button that we want to control and change the action, making sure to close the quotes around the actual action. As you can see, between this template and the manual, you're able to find the different things that you want to customize your MIDI controller to and customize the file. Now, when you go to save, and this is important, I would go ahead and save as and give it a name that lets you know that you customize it and maybe has a description of what you did. Then make sure you're saving it as a .ls MIDI file and that the file type selected here for save as type is all types. For example, if you use the notepad, the regular notepad program in Windows, it will do a text file and that won't be readable by the Lightshark. Once you've saved it, we can then go ahead to the Lightshark insert our USB stick with our template on it, at which point we can head up to the top here to the file manager and then to the USB stick. We'll then go ahead and just press import, press on our MIDI template, and the file's been imported. Now we'll follow the regular instructions for connecting our MIDI template, which is again going to our menu, going to MIDI and OSC, and we have a full video on this here selecting the template and pressing OK. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you had, be sure to subscribe here for more tips and tricks with the Lightshark. We'll see you in our next video. Thanks.